Eddie Hearn, you've got the signature that everybody wanted. Anthony Joshua's just signed with Matchroom. But why do you think he chose you other, all the, over all the other offers that he got? We're the best. No, I mean, you know, I first met Anthony probably 10 months ago after he won gold. Um, I've always stated that I'm not the kind of person that's going to phone people relentlessly, sit outside your house trying to sign them. And I knew he was a deep thinker, so he had to be mentally comfortable with his decision. So I told him to go and meet everyone. And then he came back to us again, you know, and realised that we were the perfect place for him. Um, obviously, the team that we've got, our relationship with Sky, gives him every chance to progress. And, and when you've got his ability and his makeup, all you need is the platform and the opportunity, and, and you'll get there. And I think with us, he's got that perfect platform. When you look at a fighter and you want to sign guys, obviously it sells itself an Olympic gold medal. But when you peel that back, are those the other qualities that you kind of look for him as a person, what his long-term ambitions are, and the fact that he's not just jumping at the, the, the most rewarding financial offer to go pro, he's actually thinking about a, a, lo a long game? Yeah, I mean, look, everybody's bottom line is in it for the money, but you know, we want to enjoy what we're doing, and that means working with people that we like and that we enjoy. He's a very humble guy. His desire for the sport of boxing and to achieve, you know, he's very, very special. And, and don't forget, we're making a big investment here as well. And we don't want to be making that with someone that we don't believe in or we don't like. Um, and we like him a lot and we believe in him a lot. And um, that's why we're, we're going to be a successful partnership. How important is it for Matchroom to have a heavyweight? We know you've got a sort of tie-up with David Hay to a certain extent, but now you've got you know, a three-year deal with the hottest property in heavyweight boxing possibly for the last five or so years. How, does, how important is that to Matchroom going forward? Very important, but it's not just about that. It's about investing in the sport. You know, People will you know, like to take shots at us for drifting in and out of the sport over the last 10 years. You know, that wasn't me. You know, I've been in the sport two years and look at what we've achieved. But I'm investing in the grassroots of the game effectively, the grassroots of the professional game. You know, Campbell, Cardle, Ward, Yafai, Stalker, Callum Smith and now Anthony Joshua. I'm investing a lot of money in people that I believe in because we've got to take this sport forward with, with the youngsters and the future of the game. And you need role models and ambassadors to make any sport great again. And Anthony Joshua and Luke Campbell, two gold medalists, two great ambassadors and role models for young children in gym, gyms to look up to. You know, people that have achieved their dreams out of nowhere. I mean, Luke Campbell lost his first three or four amateur bouts. You know, they told him to quit. He went on, knuckled down, become gold medalist, you know. Um, so, obviously, you know, we want to do the right thing for British boxing at the top and bottom levels. And this shows how committed we are to the long-term future of the sport. Heavyweight boxing is always a risk. We've seen with Audley Harrison, we've seen even Lennox Lewis's career, you know, he got stopped, and David Price recently, obviously. Um, does that worry you somewhat? Are you, are you confident that he's got the right team around him to make sure he gets the right fights at the right time? Yeah, like you say, heavyweight boxing, or in boxing in general, you're one punch away from a disaster. Um, I think he's got all the attributes, all the minerals to be a fantastic fighter. Um, can he go on to win a world title? I believe so. You know, but we've got a huge journey ahead of us. Um, but you know, like you say, everything can change in one punch, and um, he's got to be match right. But at the same time, we've got to, you know, we've got to weigh up the public expectation with the matchmaking and make sure that it's, it's, um, you know, it's uh, solid. Make sure that it's respectable, and that he's learning on the way. And you know, you'll always get away with the first two or three fights, but then before time, people will expect you to fight for the British title after three or four bouts. Um, but we'll do the right things for Anthony Joshua. Do you think, because he only turned over, oh, sorry, he only became an amateur around 2008 and he only had 40, 43 odd fights as an amateur and some people criticised his performance in the Olympics like Savon Cotilla looked like he may have got the victory and he, he struggled against Carmarelli in the final. Do you think we don't know quite how good Anthony is yet because he hasn't, he hasn't had some really shining victories on his way to Olympic gold? Well he's definitely raw, um, he's had 43 bouts, he's a relative novice even in the amateur game. Um, you know, the fight with Savon was really close, could have gone either way, and the final I felt he just nicked it. But, you know, listen, we're, we live in a country where people love to jump all over you at the slightest opportunity of weakness. The fact of the matter is he won Olympic gold. You know, he, he had silver medal in the world champs, um, you know, with relatively no experience at all. So he's a huge talent. Um, but, you know, you're right, he has got to be nurtured in the right way. And, and we don't know how quickly he's going to progress till we get the ball rolling. If there's one thing we've learned from heavyweights the past in this country, sometimes domestically there's not enough sparring and there's not enough competition here to really build a fighter. How important for his career will it be to not only travel to the States, but more importantly to the sort of tougher Eastern European countries and if the Klitschko's are still around, try and get involved in their camps, etc., to learn from the very best? Absolutely. You know, we're going to build a great training team around Anthony Joshua. We're going to make sure he has the best facilities, the best opportunities, and that includes the best sparring as well. 
you know, this is a learning curve for Anthony Joshua and we've got to make sure he has the ability to learn, not just by fighting regularly, but by, like you say, by mixing in the company of quality heavyweights. He's had those opportunities at the GB setup already and we've got to continue that into the pro game. But we'll leave no, no stone unturned in terms of preparing him in the way that he needs to be prepared. And like I said, when we've got you know, this, this, this product in Anthony Joshua, this brand, we've got to make sure we maximise it and we make no mistakes whatsoever. One of the criticisms levelled at Matchroom is now that you've got too many fighters. It's like, it's like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't sometimes. But how are you going to manage the expectations of all your fighters in the next season? Because now, really, you've got everyone that is everyone in British boxing pretty much to a certain extent. How are you going to make sure that all your guys get a, a fair amount of your attention, a fair amount of promotion from you? Sure. Well, like, one thing's for sure, I would never take any fighter on if I couldn't deliver what I promised them. Um, of course, if you have two fighters, um, you're going to give them more attention than if you had 20 fighters. But I think about every fighter we've got at all times. Um, I give every fighter the, the best opportunity they can. And of course, we're back into Sky Sports now for some more dates, which I believe we're going to get, which is key to moving forward. I feel that British boxing is buzzing again. And the fights that are made for the upcoming season, you know, Barker against Gill, uh, Cleverly against Kovalev, Burns against Beltran, Froch against Groves, Hay against Fury, Quig against Salinas, uh, you know, ab absolutely fantastic. And uh, it couldn't be in a better place right now. Uh, and we're at the forefront of that. And, and you know, it's not about being complacent. You know, you asked me earlier, are you going away for the summer break? Absolutely not. I'll be in the office every day. And this is when you steal a march on the people that are sitting on a sunbed. Uh, sunning themselves and I won't be I'll just be grafting non-stop over the summer. Let's talk about some of your other fighters quickly um, George Groves and Carl Froch is on it's a big fight is it going to be on Skybox office? To be honest with you we haven't even sorted a date or a venue out yet so you know I've, I've said before if it's going to be on box office it has to have a huge card with it and you know <laughs> I know that we're in a period now where I'm going to get criticised if it is on box office but I'm not an idiot now I'm a fan as well and I know what's fair and what's not fair and if it can't be fair, it won't be on box office. But if we deliver what I believe is fair for a box office fight and card, it will be. But unfortunately, people have got to trust my decision on that because no one else is going to make the decisions apart from myself and a broadcaster. And if it's worthy, it will be. And if it's not worthy, it won't be. You've gone on record before saying that Froch is one of your, your probably your favourite fighter in your camp. How is it when he's going to be facing off someone else in your camp that you're trying to bring up, maybe in Froch's tail rather than them two fighting so soon? Sure, listen, it's you're both in this fight, may the best way and win. Of course, I'm very close to, to Carl Froch, um, you know, and I rate George Groves usually as a fighter. Uh, it's difficult, obviously, having an association with both fighters, but you know, literally may the best man win, I think it's going to be a great fight. Last couple ones, Kel Brook versus Senchenko, is that completely confirmed now? And do you think it's the level of opponent that, that you, you hoped it would be? Because people are saying, we thought it was going to be a world-class guy, someone like Victor Ortiz or maybe someone like Robert Guerrero, but we've gone for someone like Senchenko, who's a clever marketing guy to, 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 to put in a fight with because he's got the win over Hatton and he's been a world champion, but maybe not as big a test as those other guys. I've, you know, you've got to realise, tell me a fighter that Kel Brook's beaten that, that's in the same league as Senchenko. Uh, he's a former world champion, he ended Ricky Hatton's career. You are correct, commercially it is perfect for Kell Brook. Um, looking back and you learn by your mistakes, I probably shouldn't have said in the interview after we got a big name, but it is a big name. I mean, you know, alright, you know, to the hardcore fan it might not be Robert Guerrero or Victor Ortiz, but to the casual fan they've never heard of Robert Guerrero. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I was getting abused about it being Shane Mosley. I would have bitten the hands off for Shane Mosley. I think that's a great fight for Kell Brook. It's a profile fight. It's a coming out fight, if you like. Um, but, you know, people doing my head in on Twitter. Oh, who is it? Who is it? And yesterday this news broke. You don't announce two big bits of news in, in one day. And then obviously the Bell you news broke this morning. So, yeah, we're talking to a lot of people, you know, and Shenchenko is one of them. And I, I do think that's a great fight for him. I really do. And obviously I can't be driven into making decisions by a couple of hundred people on Twitter. I respect their opinions of all boxing fans, but I've got to do what's right for Kelbrook, got to do what's right for my broadcaster and what makes commercial sense. And Shenchenko is certainly a fight that does. Tony Bellew is now contracted to fight the winner of Tavoris Cloud versus uh, Donis Stevenson. Is that, that's absolutely set in stone, is it? And that fight will happen in this, within this year? Yeah, the WBC have ruled that if Stevenson's going to have a uh, voluntary, he, the winner has to fight at Bellew before the end of the year. Um, we agreed terms last night to the fight with a, a mooted date of November the 30th, which is actually Bellew's birthday uh, in Quebec City. And both fighters will be contracted to fight Tony Bellew. So we've covered all the corners there and we're really happy with the result. 
Eddie, have a great summer. I know you'll be working, but have a great summer. We'll see you in the new and then you see.